Hey everybody, and welcome back to Kerbal Space Program RP0. We've got a bit of uh, logistics to attend to today, so we'll be uh, doing a bunch of things. Uh, starting out, we're going to be uh, joining the Wanderer Alpha here in orbit of Saturn. We've got a very small 17.7 uh, .7 meter per second correction to make to our inclination so that we can start to line up for our next flyby. So we're just going to go ahead and uh, get these tanks unlocked and make very quick work of uh, this little inclination change. We're actually a little too early, so uh, we'll just jump back into the time warp for a second or two, get ourselves a little bit closer. Uh, we're still trying to burn off the rest of the fuel from uh, what was supposed to be our capture stage. That thing is just uh, sticking around. Hard to get rid of that little guy, but uh, it looks like not this maneuver, but maybe the next one, which I think is uh, a little closer to 80 or 90 meters per second will uh, probably be all we have to do to clear out that uh, fuel tank and ditch that stage and let it just become the relay it was always meant to be. So just a couple little taps on the thrusters. There we go. 176 meters per second is our next maneuver. My mistake. But we still need to make sure that it is valid. It is several, several orbits from now. Uh, and hopefully it will be lining up our next uh, closest approach. But we're just going to go ahead and, yep, just a, a little, uh, a little change to our angle, and we can go ahead and set the alarm. 156 days until we need to execute that maneuver, and that will line up our uh, next flyby. But of course, we'll get to that later. So uh, it looks like we've got some time to kill. Now that we've got the alarm set and all that's done, we'll take a quick save, and then we're going to uh, jump on out to the moon and farm some science. And here we are at uh, the Rosalina Memorial Station. We've got some science to transmit home, so we're going to just uh, speed a bunch of this footage up. This is all in four times speed. As you can tell, it takes a very, very long time to radio in this science, but uh, our... Two research science here, Cy, uh, Sally Bailey and Catherine Richards, have been working around the clock, pushing out close to 30 science a day uh, on average or so. But uh, that does mean that we need to check back in with them uh, periodically to make sure that we can radio in the science when that lab gets its, uh, I guess its data full, hard drive is full, we need to copy it to the backups. Uh, back at the Space Center. I, I don't know how it works, but I understand the limitation. They need to have some kind of game mechanic there. But uh, we're also going to be using our time in Time Warp to uh, drain some of the life support supplies from our Ascent module. I think we will actually be done with all of the science farming here before the next supply module is going to be done being built. Is fine. They got plenty of life support. There's no real danger. We just need to figure out some kind of weight balance for that uh, lander so that we can try to get it back into orbit for a rendezvous. The uh, good thing is the rescue ship will certainly be ready, but we'll get to that later. So we're just going to try to transfer in a little bit more data into the research module and then start this next upload now that we have the room for it. And once the radio in is complete, we'll jump back into time warp and let that science bar fill almost all the way up again and transmit it home. This is like, I don't know, the second round of uh, transmitting of the science that they've done. So they've already garnered us a thousand science just in the last uh, month or so, which is, I mean, this thing really pays off pretty well as far as being able to farm some science. It does a pretty good job if you've got enough data to load it, then can really generate a, a lot of science points, even off uh, stuff that you've already done the research for. Like, I think almost everything we've loaded into this lab are experiments that we had run and radioed in previously. And so we're basically just getting free science points for the cost of whatever it was to build this base. Yeah, we're down to about uh, 340 days of uh, viable support here on station. So we're just going to transfer... Yeah, that's about the halfway mark on our lander, which means it should give the crew of three about 10 days life support, which hopefully will be, will be well more than enough that they need to perform orbital rendezvous with the uh, rescue craft, which means uh, all the life support that we have here on station is all that there's going to be. 
and like I said before, I'm pretty sure that they can just finish this farming out relatively quickly. Uh, I think we're down to just like one last experiment or so to transfer into the lab. Uh, as soon as it's data, you know, the data is capped. We can only have so many experiments in there at a time. So as soon as that's low enough for us to transfer in the, the high point value experiments, uh, we will. But I think everything that we've already run in the lab that we've got duplicates of, we're just going to bring home. Why not? I don't think we're going to get any payout for it, but, I, you know, it's worth a try. So this is our next radio in batch. I think we went from like 200 science to 2,200 science just in the time we've been here already, which is pretty awesome. I have to say, this is a, a lot more efficient than I ever gave it credit for. I guess I should have been paying a lot closer attention to this. We may have could have gotten it done a lot sooner. But we will get the Kerbal Alarm Clock for Tombaugh's Ambassador. This is uh, formerly Pluto 1, now Tombaugh's Ambassador. I did swap out the dish on this when I did that uh, a bunch of corrective things to the non-functioning, non-RP0 comms dishes. And this is the one that got a little weird, because I had a bunch of thrusters mounted to the old dish, and of course had it offset a little bit to kind of match with the build. So it's uh, just hovering its comms dish and a bunch of thrusters rather randomly. But um, that's a whole lot of work to fix, and I just don't think I'm going to do it. Anyway, we've got about a half a meter per second correction here to adjust our course for Pluto. Uh, which is super exciting for me. I've never sent anything to Pluto. Let's just take a quick look here. This is where we are currently. We're still several years away from hitting uh, Pluto at all. But I just want to take a uh, more precise look at our telemetry. Pluto, not Neptune. Thank you very much. And we'll zoom in. That's where we're going currently, which takes us uh, just inside the orbit of Charon. We would like to get as close to Pluto as absolutely possible. Uh, I don't think it's going to be a thing, but I'm certainly going to try to burn for Pluto orbit. Um, like I said, I'm pretty sure it's not going to happen. But the closer we can get in, the more of an Oberth effect we'll have on said burn. Oh, that is nice and close. That is awesome. Now, that uh, 739 meters per second is not reflective of what we actually have on hand. I still have a, uh, a large fuel tank on our main stage here uh, locked. So I think we probably have at least uh, 2 kilometers per second in there, plus whatever's in the probe. But if we come out here to our uh, periapsis at Pluto, which is still 90 kilometers high, we could probably uh, tune that in just a bit and slam on the brakes. Yeah, we're not hitting orbit until, I mean, not even, that's 7.6 kilometers per second. I think it's going to get uh, a little closer. Now 7.676 kilometers per second to get to form into a capture. And that's a really eccentric capture. I don't think we have that on hand <laughs> with everything given. But uh, so This is obviously just going to be a, uh, a basic flyby, but hopefully we'll be able to gather lots and lots and lots of very interesting data on said flyby. Uh, it would be really interesting to see how this works out. But like I said, we've got a couple of years before we get there, but the good news is we can actually relatably uh, call in our science once we get there and actually get paid for it, which is awesome. I'm super excited about how much science we're going to be able to farm from that. Man, if that dish wasn't all screwed up, this would be a pretty cool looking spacecraft. Anyway. We're going to add our alarm for our SOI change. That is in eight years and 92 days. I'm going to give us a, uh, about 35 minutes of lead time before we make the transition. I should probably do way more than that considering signal delay. I want to make sure that I can queue stuff up. Anyway, now we're going to uh, jump over to uh, Nopey McNope Face. It's still listed as Jovian Lander there in Kerbal Alarm Clock because I set the alarm before we uh, graciously renamed this little guy for his uh, new mission after his telemetry got somehow magically messed up within uh, Kerbal Space Program. I had, it's done this to me before. Uh, it did it with the uh, Venus Return Project. That's why the first one went to Mars. This is kind of ironic. It messed up the telemetry on something going to Jupiter. It's now also going to go to Mars. It's just going to take it a couple of years to get there, uh, but it's I don't know, the best shot it has of doing 
absolutely anything other than just wandering aimlessly through space. So this is his first of two corrective burns to uh, make sure that he can actually hit Mars SOI. This one was about 135 or so meters per second. Uh, there will be a second correction in, I think, one orbit. Like it won't be this pass, but it'll be the next one. We'll make a uh, a second burn to correct to actually put him on course to hit Mars. Which, um, honestly, after having seen this, you should probably do a braking action before that happens. As you can see here, I'm just making some touch-ups to this uh, much later node to bring us in as close to Mars as I think is feasible. Yeah, it's not too bad. There's Phobos. That's our target. We might as well uh, get a good look at our inclination now. We'll just uh, try to add a maneuver here to see what it's going to look like to capture into orbit. And the news, uh, not particularly good. Yeah, uh, we're looking at something like 9,000 meters per second to capture. And we don't have a heat shield. Well, this is going to be interesting. I guess we're going to have to figure out some kind of gravity assist system. But uh, for now, we'll just set the alarm and then uh, jump back over to our moon base for our last bit of science farming. So uh, here we are, a little bit of time warping, because that's uh, what we left in the middle of. And we can go ahead and transmit in this uh, load of science. Which we're already at 3,278, so I guess this is our fourth call-in, our fifth call-in. We've already done four, right? Well, uh, roughly. Either way, there's not much more science to be done here. And uh, had Boris not wrecked the rover, or were I not uh, paying attention to cannon, we could totally dispatch the rover uh, automated to go visit biomes that are too far away for it to take a crew to, farm more science, and then start to bring that back. But the truth of the matter is, is I need qualified research scientists to send on our missions to Mars. Uh, it would be really nice, because the higher rank they are, the faster they farm science. And when we're out at Mars, we're under a much larger time crunch than when we are here at the moon. So uh, I think basically in order to help pay for this moon lab, we're probably going to send an autonomous rover on its own lander with a much broader science laid out, have it farm some science from a biome or two, and then automatically drive itself back to this moon lab where we will get some more greenhorn scientists out here and have them practice researching things in lower gravity environments. Anyway, we've uh, just transferred our last little bit of data into the lab module itself. And uh, we're going to start radioing stuff in again. So I think uh, one more round, this thing should be uh, pretty good to go. Anyway, the science that we're not going to farm into the lab, we are going to transfer into our Mark II lander can on uh, our lander vehicle. So that uh, we can bring whatever we're not going to research here home. And uh, we'll discuss with our planning committee future plans for this research station. Anyway, that's going to do it for this episode, everybody. Thank you so much for hanging out. I know it was a little jumbled and a little all over the place, but uh, I really do appreciate you guys hanging out with me. And I will see all of you in the next one. So until then, see you later.